Okay, now that we have just defined what a vector space is, let's take a look at some examples. And so recall with a vector space, we need to have a set of objects. So in this case, our set of objects, V, are the set of all vectors in R2. And we need to have a addition, vector addition operation and a scalar multiplication operation. So let's just consider the standard vector addition where we add vectors component wise and the standard scalar multiplication for vectors where if I take a scalar times a vector, we just multiply each um, entry in the vector by that scalar. So these are the typical operations we've been working with. And so let's check to see whether these properties, these 10 properties for a vector space are satisfied. So recall the first property is that um, this set is closed under the addition operation. So if I take any two vectors in R2 and I add them together, that results in a vector in R2. So that is satisfied. Next is um, that vector addition satisfies the commutative property. And this was one of the properties of our usual vector addition. So this is satisfied. We also know that when we add um, three vectors that this operation is associative. So I can add these two together first and then add W or add V and W together first and then add U to that. So these are properties that vector addition satisfies. Um, certainly when I take the zero vector and add it to U, here our zero vector is the vector that has two components, both of them equal to zero. So this is the vector that is zero, zero. So when we add this to any vector u, it's not gonna change and we get u back. So that satisfies property four. Um, we do have an additive inverse here, namely for any vector that we have in R2, let's say it's u1 equals u2, then we have a additive inverse, which we get by multiplying each of the components by minus one. So if I take this vector u, and add this vector over here, we'll get the zero vector back. So we call this vector the additive inverse of the first vector that we started with. And that's why um, you see that this notation of putting a negative in front of u is convenient here, but I just want to warn you that um, this is a more abstract thing, and we may see examples where the additive inverse is actually something other than minus one times the vector. But for this example, with the usual operations, yes, our additive inverse would just be minus one times that vector u. And then we have some operations dealing with um, scalar multiplication. So multiplying any two vector in R2 by a scalar is going to result in another vector in R2. So that is satisfied. Um, when I take uh, scalar C and multiply it by the sum of two vectors, this was a property that um, these typical operations of vector addition and scalar multiplication, when we defined them earlier, we satisfied this property seven, um, this property, the second distributive property, that C plus D times the vector U equals C U plus D U, that's going to be satisfied by these operations. Same with this um, associative operation for scalar multiplication. And lastly, um, it is true that when I take the number one times any vector U in R2, we are going to get that same vector back. So we do have a multiplicative uh, identity as well. So um, this is kind of the first standard example to look at. Basically, we defined these operations, addition and scalar multiplication earlier, in a way so that all of these properties are satisfied. So that gives us our first vector space, that R2, equipped with the kind of standard vector addition and standard scalar multiplication this is an example of a vector space.